All right, welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everyone. My name's Jeff. Back at the 187 acres building the bison ranch. So back behind us over here in pasture seven, you're gonna see is all the buffalo. They're gonna probably start coming up. We've closed this gate. It's time to move them to pasture six. We're gonna go ahead and get that going today. It's green and that isn't so much. We're gonna shoot them over. Of course, naturally we're gonna bait them. So stick with us as we work with them to get them over and I will see if, uh, if it goes smooth. We've got some water things to check out. We've got some cubes to do and uh, some buffalo to wrangle. Keep with us. Now we've shifted the feed schedule on the cubes one whole day. So before we used to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, now we're doing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. It's kind of a bumpy ride, but we're doing that just because the hay usually ends. We fill it on a Saturday and it usually ends Sunday. So we expect fully that when the buffalo go into this pen, they're not gonna actually wanna eat any hay for a while. So we're not gonna actually feed them hay right now. We'll probably feed them hay tomorrow. But I imagine just with the growth that we've got, they're probably gonna burn through this within a couple days. So they'll probably go back to seven, I would guess, Saturday, three or four days from now. We decided to close this off. This is gonna grant the buffalo access to the different areas here inside the pens. And you can see the grass is approaching the kneecap of a pumpkin. So we're actually gonna open these up. So we're gonna got that side that's already open. This side is not. Some of those others. Let's get some of these gates and open them up real quick. Let it sing, let it sing. And this stuff is up past my knees. Let's open this guy in. The same with across the way. Yes, in case you're wondering, I do have grease hinges on these things, desserts. I have not used them yet. So yes, it's on the uh, to-do list. We've got the cube set out. Time for the buffalo. Well, here comes Ahmed to the gate. Last time he was a little ornery and a little pushy. I need to stand back, buddy. Stand back. There's always one left. Well, so I'm gonna close this gate. Last time we did this, the other gate we accidentally left open. But as you can see, they're leaving. As we told you before, the buffalo, when it comes to fresh grass and cubes, they're gonna take the grass for the most part. So we saw most of the herd left. Let's see how they're doing. Well, golly gosh darn, look at that. They're coming back in. Guess the grass wasn't too tempting after all. Obviously, pasture six looks better 
than Pasture 7 does. It still has its shortcomings. It's not fully grown. We've been giving it as much time as possible. But the reason I, I want to bring them in here is it's not raining and it doesn't look like we have any substantial chance for rain for the next week and a half to two weeks. And it's been about a couple weeks since we had any rain. So that'd be a month. I just want to make sure these animals are able to get the grass before the grass kind of starts to go brown and dormant again. So we'll leave them here for a few days, as I mentioned earlier. Obviously, this is not as tall as what was in the handling facility. So we are going to leave the gate open. They can get in there. But uh, if I was smart, you know, I probably would have checked to make sure we had water. And uh, that's its own issue. So let's go check out the water. And uh, I got to make a repair real quick. Otherwise, plans might change. So this water actually has a nice film on it. It's been here a while. I'm just going to actually drain this. But we have to uh, fix the Rojo valve because the innards don't seem to be working too well. So my issue with this Rojo valve is that inside the water doesn't come out with a lot of force at all. So this is what I have. And this is what we got. This is the uh, inner cartridge assembly. So obviously I seem to be missing something. Let's see if that stops it or starts it again. I don't know why this would make such a difference, but let's see if it does. Bug. Bug. So my thought is maybe when this gets pushed or something, I don't know, this nose I think hits the little yellow. I don't know, let's give it a shot and see. So just FYI, if you're going to be replacing these things on your own, that innard cost about three quarters of the cost of the entire thing. Let's give this a test before we anchor it down. That is a lot more than we had. All right, now since this is gonna take forever, wise man would turn the water off. As always, it's gonna fill faster now. If you plug the hole. You're ingenious, Pugkin. It's still open. This is why you have helpers. <laughs> Otherwise I would have driven off and been like, why is this thing not filling up? All right, bug, turn on the water now. All right, let's see how much we retain now. Let's go check on the buffalo real quick and um, come back to this. This will probably take about 20, 30 minutes to fill up. It's been a few minutes and as you can see the buffalo are doing great. They're just calm, eating, doing what buffalo do. It's amazing how much time you can waste just sitting here looking at them, right? Anyway, got a question for some of you guys. I've been noticing more and more this year that we're getting mushrooms. Little fungi friends in our pastures. Ones that look like this. And I'm wondering if you guys know why they come? Possibly what kind they are and uh, what would you do to get rid of them? Because they're in sporadic spots different places. So, you know, I don't know if there's just a general treatment you would do across the entire pasture or are there anything to be concerned about? Stuff like that. If you got any insights about having little mushrooms grown in your pastures, if that's a big deal or not, let me know. But otherwise, we've given it some time. Let's go check 
the water trough. It might be ready. And it looks like I need to shorten the ball. We're getting too close on the ends. And the buffalo will splash around a little bit when they do this. So. The trick is not losing your place. All right, ball's adjusted. I'm gonna actually leave this one filled up over in the other pasture since these guys are gonna be here maybe three days till weekend possibly. Cause I think they're just gonna eat it a lot pretty fast. Well, on the way out, let's go ahead and check the cubes and see. They didn't eat all the cubes. They actually left a bunch. They may have gotten some nibbles, but that grass seemed a little too tempting. See extra here and there's extra down here. Now they did eat a bunch. They did actually do a good job. They ate some. They'll naturally, of course, come back later on tonight and finish it all off, but they want the grass. All right, guys, we're back. It's been a couple of days, actually about four days. This is now a Sunday, so we're gonna finish up this rotation. And of course today, like on all days, we check the pigs, we check the water, we check the dogs, we check the yearlings, all the animals get checked. And obviously, of course, we're now here with the pigs because the pigs decided to screw up their waterer. The pigs generally uh, don't drink, it seems like, a lot of water out of this waterer. We had the nipple waterer. Yeah, dude, I know. And uh, today was the first day we're like, wow, they drank a lot of water. So we started filling it up. And then come to find out the pigs weren't too interested when we were filling up all their water bowls. And we're like, wow, they just seem to be over here a lot. Well, the reason why is because there's no actual nipple. <laughs> they seem to have dislodged it, taken it, buried it. I don't know what they did with it. So we now decided to fill up their other water. And uh, we're gonna let this one, I guess, get to a point where they can start drinking out of it and um, go on a lookout for that other water nippler. Nippler waterer? Water nipple. Water nipple. The pig right here is officially called Chunky. He's kind of chunky. And Chunky seems to rule the roost. Now, I will tell you a kind of update of plan. So originally we were gonna be processing two of these pigs, keeping the two females. We're actually gonna butcher all four of these. We're gonna get a new crop of pigs coming up in a month. And uh, those are gonna be from a boar of a different line and a females of a different line. So they're gonna be not related. So we're gonna just take those and use those to bring up the pigs of the next generation. So anyway, all four of these are gonna go to slaughter uh, first part of November. All right, dropped off the hay for some yearlings. They're looking good. We also got some hay dropped off here in seven. So it's time to move them back. So we've been back, um, like I said, four days now. Uh, we're showing you the full rotation of it, kind of what six looks like. And so hay is set. We gotta get these guys in there. And we've got a mixture of in, the feed pen and not in the feed pen. So this is gonna make doing cubes a little bit interesting, but this is what six looks like. They're still actually eating. We have not given them any hay in four days. Um, I would never have guessed that there was that much grass in six, but I guess in a normal growing season, look what you could do. But they've actually been doing just fine. So even delivering this hay, half of them didn't even come in. So anyway, time to get some cubes to them we're gonna try and close off that other gate, get them all over here. It's gonna be a fiasco. We're gonna see how this works, but, uh, and doing it safely. So we might be in the back of the truck doing this. All right, so here's pasture seven. Got our hay down. Look how green it is. It is coming back. We know we're just gonna trash this place and it's gonna get bad again, okay? Our priority is to make sure pasture six does not look horrible and get totally demolished. So since this one's under repair, um, we're gonna keep demolishing it. They're just gonna keep working it and eating it down. We've been moving the bales of hay slowly back up more and more towards the gate. And uh, we started way down there and we've been just mixing them all the way up as we've been coming. And right now we're just close to the gate. So open gate, see who leaves and see how we get all these cubes in. I'm not sure how much of that we're gonna be able to film. It depends on what the buffalo do.
plan is drop these cubes, but there's most of the herd is sitting over here. My wife did bring up a concern is, will they come around like normal? So we're gonna drop cubes. They should react well enough to that to come back in through that gate is my hope. If they do, they'll come to the cubes like they probably will, and then we'll close the gate. If they don't, we're gonna have to chase some of them through and try and work them to come back in that gate. All right, buffalo are coming. Not the best way to do this, but we're gonna do it. Time to close it up. Now that all the animals are in, we can shut it and move them. They'll move over to seven just fine now. All right, so all the cubes are moved. We got it to work. Plan done, gate closed. That one's open, all the hay is fed. So the yearlings are doing good. These guys are doing good. I was surprised to actually make as much time without hay. I'm not gonna say that they look better after being on the grass, but it was a relief on the hay. I think I have a lead on some hay. The hay guy said he's gonna be able to do a third cut um, on the grass, which is actually the second cut since third disappeared in the summer, or the second disappeared. So I may be able to get some new hay coming up. I'm not sure how much, so I need that. Anyway, we wanted to just take you through all of this kind of movement, because it wasn't gonna be very long. The shifting over, the coming back, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that Six gave us that much. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This is kind of what we go through, always planning how we're doing this. And uh, we're gonna go back to seven now and trash it again. So anyway, talk to you guys later. Catch us next time, and we'll see you at Black Acre. Bye. <laughs>